Okay, so this next OWASP top 10 entry, vulnerability A8, is cross-site request forgery. So you'll see it called, usually called CSRF. Sometimes it's called XSRF. Not quite sure whether one is the official one or not. I tend to call it CSRF. Um, and it's one of those ones where it can be quite difficult to understand what's actually happening. Uh, when you first hear about it but once you've looked at it a few times and hopefully once I've shown you this demo that I've put together showing you what's going on you'll kind of understand a little bit more about what CSRF is. The good news is most frameworks have a protection mechanism built in and the good news is it's usually very easy to enable it and pretty much to forget about it uh, although you might want to obviously test it and make sure it's working as expected. So cross-site request forgery occurs when an attacker using their own site abuses the trust that the browser has with a target site, so the site that the attacker is trying to attack, by asking that victim site to carry out an action um, pretending to be on behalf of the user when in actual fact it's the attacker that's caused it to happen. And the main reason this is a problem is that it will take advantage of any current session that the user, the victim, has um, open in the other site and it will automatically send those session cookies to the victim site. And this has become a big problem because browser tabs share session. And the reason they do that is to allow people to open up multiple tabs, mo multiple views onto the same site. And the expectation is if you do that, people kind of expect all of the tabs to be synchronized. But what that does mean is if I open another tab and I visit the attacker's site, if the attacker makes a request to a different site, even if they can't really see what they're doing, then the browser will automatically send any cookies back to that target site on behalf of the attacker. So it's very easy to attack if the site doesn't have any way to know whether the action has come from its own page that it generated or whether it's come from an attacker invoking that mechanism um, on behalf of the browser. So like I say, on older sites, it was very common because older sites, older frameworks didn't really think about security controls or maybe they maybe they weren't really a problem back then. Uh, but nowadays it's less common because most modern frameworks have built in cross-site request forgery protection. It isn't always enabled by default. So it's something that you do need to check and I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. And there is also a difference between some sites will generate a cross-site request forgery code. You'll see what that code is in a minute. But some sites just do that once per session. So that seems slightly less secure. And you'll understand why it seems less secure later. However, because the attacker cannot actually see what that token is, it's still very difficult to take advantage of. What other sites will do is they will ha they will generate a new uh, request forgery protection token every single time a page is impressed. So that's more secure. The problem with that is if you start opening multiple tabs, you might get problems trying to post back your form to do something on the site. But let's have a look at what this actually looks like um, rather than trying to explain it. So. Here's one of my trusty test applications. I use it for teaching a uh, year two framework. And what I've done is I've added another little tab here and it's only for when you're logged in, which is not very interesting to this conversation. And all this is, is it's a pretend bank account. Um, and in this bank account, this is my user ID. So I'm logged in as Luke and that's user ID three. And my bank account balance is 400 pounds. Now, what I mean, this is obviously a, a very poor example because you probably have, wouldn't have a bank account like this. But if I click the update and I want to say, oh, I've taken out £200, I'm just going to update this. I'm going to click that and it does kind of what you'd expect it to do. It updates the database and the display now shows £200. So, like I say, a very, very um, poor example of a website, but it goes to show how the cross-site request forgery works. 
And hopefully you know this, but if we go to the update page and we actually view the source of this, uh, why can't I? Do? Oh, it's because I'm not in the right place. If I actually look down here, what we're really looking at is we're looking at a form. So if we look here, we'll see on this page here, we've got two boxes inside a form. So you'll see one of the boxes is there, input type text, and that's the user, and it's set to three. And then the other input down here is the balance, and that's set to 200. Inside the form, we have a, a button. It could be an input, but in this case, it's a button of type submit. And what that means is if I click this button, this form will be submitted. And where will it be submitted to? It will be submitted to whatever is in the value of action. So in this case, when I click submit, the controller, the account controller is going to be called. The update action is going to be called. The ID of three is going to be passed so it knows which account we're talking about. Obviously, this is not very secure, but again, it's just an example. And then these two values will get posted in the form. And so the controller can take those values and update the database. So hopefully you know how forms work um, and it's kind of quite important. So, OK, this user's kind of logged into their their account they've come along and go okay i've got an account here it's you know user id3 i've got 200 pounds in there and while they're visiting their their real bank account uh, they then happen to visit this attackers page now obviously when you visit an attackers page it doesn't usually come up in bright red saying this is an attackers page if it does and you still click on stuff then you probably deserve to lose your money uh, i shouldn't really say that but um, obviously this site could be anything it might be a shopping site it could be um, it could even be another real site that an attacker has hacked to put their code in um, but this really just demonstrates what the cross-site request forgery does so if I look at the source code for this page which I have open in here all I've done I literally copied and pasted this form from the real web website from here from the update page i've copied the form code from there i've pasted it in here and the only thing i've done is i've commented out this cross-site request forgery field um if it's in there or not i don't think it'll make any difference but i wanted to comment it out just to show you what would actually happen um if i posted this so really i've copied that it's pointing to the correct website and it's going to have all the correct named fields and all the rest of it and of course that's a very easy thing for an attacker to do it takes almost no effort to go into a page like this you create your own account you copy the html from there you copy the form action you paste it into your bad page and you create some kind of form of this now obviously this could all be hidden so I've shown it as a visible form but the form could be hidden with numbers hard coded it could be called in Ajax in JavaScript there's lots of different ways an attacker can do this but this just goes to show you the point so the point being here is when I click this I'm actually pointing at a different website but it's not obvious from this page now obviously the URL is not going to be called bad but if this was, you know, Amazon or something like that, you think you're on a real page, you're just doing something, and then you trigger, let's just check, we're at 200 at the minute, let's go back to that just to make sure, 200. You trigger this, and it, oh, sorry, I forgot to do one thing. Because, um, because this is enabled by default, um, C, uh, the CSRF protection, I just need to disable it manually. Um, talk about that in a second. So let's do that again. Hit update. Now, when I hit update, as well as posting back, the the real website will then redirect to this page. So that's why we seem to have jumped into this site. Um, we haven't actually gone there directly. It's just redirected us automatically. But the important thing is now is even though we had £200 in there, by posting a form from a completely different website, that's ended up basically succeeding and it's updated my bank account balance obviously an attacker is more likely to do something like take money out of your bank account or transfer it to someone else or in fact anything that the web application does so it doesn't really it's not always about money it could be about identity it could be about uh, changing the email address on the account so all those kinds of things um 
And you can see how easy it is to do if your site doesn't have cross-site request forgery protection on there. Uh, and what actually happens, if we go back to this page, when we submit this, because we make a request to this site, ye2.test, the browser automatically sends the cookies, which I can see if I do this and dock this, wherever I dock it, how do I dock it? Um, there. Right, so if we actually look at um, resources, and we go down here and look at cookies, Oop. you'll see uh, the main ones we're interested in is this one really, the session. So this is a session cookie which allows the server to know who I am or, or which which session that I'm working in. Um, in this case, the cross-site request forgery is um, is dumped in there, even though it's disabled at the minute for the controller. But you see that that there is important. Now, when I submit this page, that cookie will automatically be sent to the target. Why? Because for all this browser knows, I'm just opened up another tab and I'm trying to do something in my real website. So when I hit update, because it sends this cookie, then the server at the other end goes, oh great, I know who you are because you're already logged in, you've got a session, we're all good. And you can end up doing all kinds of damage. Now, I said earlier, um, and I'll show you again, that if we go back to here, that cross-site request forgery validation is now quite a common feature in most frameworks. And in Ye2, which is this framework, the PHP framework, it is enabled by default, which is good, which you, you want it to be. Um, and what that would what that does, let's show you what it actually does. Uh, if I now click on this again, and if I go to update. Now, if I look at this and just scroll up here, you notice that the framework has automatically added a hidden field called cross-site request forgery with an underscore, probably just to make sure it doesn't conflict with yours, and basically a big randomly generated number. It doesn't matter what the number is, just that it's cryptographically strong and random. And this will get generated here. Uh, we'll have a look whether it gets generated per session or per page. Let's hide the console, get that out of the way. So in the normal case, if I say, right, I want to do 200, effectively this is going to be posted back to the framework and the framework's going to check that against the value in the cookie and if it's happy which it is in this case then it's updated and that's all good um if i go back to update again and let's inspect that again uh that's actually a different value so um ye2 is generating this every time you have a new page which is fine um but the important protection that that offers now is what happens now, so we've gone down to 200 pounds. What happens if my attacker is now going to try and call um, the other page? Now, it doesn't really matter if I have this in place or not. I'm going to need this because it's going to look for it to try and check it. But the point is, the attacker has no way of knowing what that number is. Because the attacker can't see the contents of this page. Um, because it doesn't have access to it, it's in a different domain. So although the attacker can post to here, can post its form with all of the right boxes, it doesn't have any way of knowing what the proper value is. So guess what happens when you try and do update? Bad request, unable to verify your data submission. So effectively what the framework's done is it's looked at that value it's checked it against the uh, cookie value because you saw that earlier if we go to uh, resources cookies you'll see the crs it's actually encoded it here as well um, so it's encoded a value into the cookie and when it when the page comes back it checks the cookie against the form field and if they don't match you get the error now you can't say well can't the attacker get around that well no the, the attacker can't get around that because although the cookie will automatically be sent by the attacker's um, web request they won't be able to send um, the correct version of that uh, sorry I keep closing everything um, the attacker cannot send that so the attacker's request will never match the cookie um, unless 
they have other malware on the system. So I mentioned earlier the difference between per session and per page. If you're a per session um, cross-site request forgery, then it's obviously possible, but very difficult, for an attacker to use some other kind of attack to work out what that value is to then automatically put it into his own attacking request to then send it to the server. So that is possible, but it's still a really difficult attack to do because you can see otherwise it's actually really quite straightforward to do this. One hidden field and a value in the cookie and you've instantly got cross-site request forgery protection. Um, it's as easy as that. And like I say, nowadays, um, most frameworks have it. Make sure it's turned on and make sure you test it so i think uh, i'm going to do a video right at the end of the top 10 about how to to glue all of these things together but there should be things that you do once so if you're using a framework you can make some basic checks on it does it do sessions correctly does it do uh, csrf correctly does it have validation built in etc etc and once you've done that once those things are not going to change if you stay using the same framework so you've got some kind of first things that you need to do do a check, make sure the cross-site request forgery protection works. Just something like I did, took me 20 minutes to knock up. Um, so you do all those things once. There are then other things that you need to do every time you check in code. So when you check in code, you're saying, am I validating all my inputs? Uh, am I checking the authorization, function level access control? Am I protecting against direct object references and all the other things? So with uh, cross-site request forgery, once you've worked out that your framework does it, once you've worked out it's enabled, once you've tested it and make sure it definitely is working, then you can almost forget about it, uh, except maybe if you ever have a major release, you might want to go through your testing stuff again. But otherwise, it's just a case of, um, you know, turning it on. How do we do it? You know, find out if your framework supports it, uh, enable it. You might not need to do anything else. Uh, find out whether you use per session or per page. Decide whether you care or not and which one you want to use. You can possibly change it over. Um, and then test that your site implements it correctly. So do what I did just then. Replay a post and see where the action is permitted. Now, one thing that's worth mentioning here, this is kind of an old-fashioned rule, but it's definitely relevant for cross-site request forgery. You should never, ever change anything on your site in response to a GET request. So originally, a GET was literally that, GET data from the system. Uh, if you want to change it, then you would either use, in the old days, PUT or POST to make a change. But you should never, ever change your site. Why is that? Because the cross-site request forgery stuff won't be checked when you call GET because no form will be posted, which means no token will be sent back to the server. Um, so you should never use GET in that instance. Always use POST, which means that you can post back the cross-site request forgery token. And... Um, I think the important thing there, again, is to do with testing it. Make sure you test it, because even if you got this wrong, this thing down here, if you tested it, you would know whether you've got it wrong or not. But other than that, it should be quite an easy thing to fix. Uh, it should hopefully become a bit of a history uh, thing now, because frameworks are kind of doing it, and people are, are working out how to, to turn these things on. So that's kind of all there is, really, to... Uh, cross-site request forgery uh, the next one which i'll hopefully film quite soon is to do with uh, components with known vulnerabilities there's no real code for that um, but i might show you kind of a few examples of of what you need to do but in general um, hopefully this made sense hopefully you can kind of see um, how it works and how, how you protect against it using the protection um, and hopefully you will appreciate that it's usually quite easy to fix so comments questions etc 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 please um, put them below the video and i will record the next one very soon